Let's break some rules. You know my channel. I always do 100 days in a bunch of different challenges. But one thing has always been certain. We never go beyond. That is until now. We're gonna spend another 100 days in my Skyblock world. If you wanna see this world from the beginning, make sure to click the other video linked in the description. And if you wanna see 300 days, just share this video. If it does really well, we'll do another. And you know, with each new video comes new merch, but this time it's a little different. We just released some art for Extraction, our PvPVE game built in Minecraft. It's all about running and looting and getting what you can. I have a lot of fun working on it and it's very spooky right now. So go check it out at leg.gg. And you never know, you could find more info in bluer skies link in the description. Believe me, I'm excited. So let's get started. Day 101. Yo, I have never, never recorded 200 days before. All the way since like my very first Minecraft world. I am super excited. And we're going to start this as interesting as I can possibly make it. Trial chamber time. I don't know where one is but we're gonna find it. So we're getting into this right away, flying due south, heading to find new chunks and new adventures. For those of you who don't know, this is Skyblock Infinite, meaning you still get certain things like structures, some really tiny islands, and things like ancient cities just sitting out in the void. This is as far south as I'd ever been, so let's just keep going. I'm hoping that they're gonna be really easy to spot given that there's nothing else in the world. I grabbed myself a little bit of gold, and yes, you're seeing things pop up in the corner. We had something weird happen. Oh yeah, my advancements reset. I don't know why. Like, some of them reset, and some of them didn't. I... Uh, I don't know. Oh wait, there it is! There it is, let's get into a fight. Let's get into a fight, I'm so excited. It's actually kind of funny that this video is coming out now because just last week we did a trial chamber focused video in UHCG and it wasn't intended. These were recorded almost a month apart at this time. So actually this was my first encountering of any trial chamber in any world. First couple spawners I had to deal with were mainly strays, but thankfully this is day 101. I have some pretty good weapons and armor and I'm able to take on the fight. And I gotta say, being in Skyblock makes me excited about the most random things. Wait, wait. Oh my goodness, ice. This is actually really important. But we're working our way through, taking on breezes and spiders, getting ourselves some interesting books. But as I was dealing with the mobs on the interior, since this thing is completely exposed to air, all of the dark surfaces were spawning hundreds of other mobs, which I could just hear upset at me up above the roof. I hear every, gee, I wonder if it's become daytime. Welcome to day 102. Thankfully in this world, I have shulker boxes. So navigating all of the immense diversity of loot that you get from a trial chamber is a little bit easier. This is one of those cases where I really wish bundles were successful and weren't being held back by mobile. It would be so nice. But I got everything categorized into like a blocks shulker, a weapons and items and unstackables and went around just seeing what else I could find. I actually picked up some cobbled deep slate, which is the first deep slate that I've had in the world. I know I reset my advancements, but that's actually the first. Running back through the trial chambers after doing organizing and everything else, some of the very first spawners I had encountered had already reset. So I picked up a few final extra keys, a few extra bits of deep slate, and a few nightmares from the mobs waiting in between the shadows. Oh my god. I enjoyed playing around with wind charges for a little bit. You're gonna see quite a bit of that. They're my new favorite toy. Hitting up the vaults and getting some cool rewards. New trims. Heck yes. But I'm just doubling back, trying to make sure that I had grabbed everything, making sure to grab all of the ice from here, all of the cobbled deep slate, and any other valuables that might be useful. Trial chambers unlock a whole bunch of new items, and I'm really excited to have them in the game. But that's not the only thing that I would find. Wait. Oh, there's so much new stuff to play with. 
Oh, that's he we're gonna have to come back to that. I am I am not ready for that just yet. That's gonna require some archaeology supplies, which we'll get to. I flew my way back home, seeing some additional ice poking out of the deep dark and thinking, well, as long as I'm collecting ice, I might as well get as much as I can, because I have some plans for this. Stay tuned. But flying over the void and making my way home, I landed in front of my house and went to rest. The following day, we're doing a little bit more organizing, this time at home. Dropping off all of the loot in the chest that I've collected, trying to roughly categorize everything into where I think it should go. I only have a couple chests here, realistically, and we're gonna outpace that quick. But I figured let's catch up on the world a little bit first. There's a couple chores left undone from the very end of the last hundred days. Cleaning out the mob farm, condensing down all of the gunpowder into its own chest, collecting all of the arrows into a chest as well, and breaking down all of the bones into bone blocks. Really the only way I can store all of these different things and all of that is very useful for a few farms we'll be setting up soon. I set aside all of the ice I had collected. I'm gonna need about 12 blue ice for one of the farms I'm going to make. And I'm just genuinely excited. Now you see why I'm excited. There is so much for us to do. Why is there, there's a waypoint in the middle of my face. But there's no time to waste, so let's parkour up to the portal and get to work. But we're not here for anything that we've done previously. I actually sailed over the rudimentary gold farm, the nether fortress, and I'm flying around until the sky starts to turn blue, seeing a small little speck of brown spicy dirt in the distance. This is the soul sand and soul soil that I will need in order to make a really critical farm. But as long as I'm here, I kept searching out, finding a bastion in the distance, fighting with skeletons and then with the piglin inhabitants, tricking a lot of them to fall into the void, which is quite entertaining, and bowing down the rest, looting the chest at the top and claiming my prize. Yo, that's an upgrade template. And pig step, I'll take it. That's the sign to leave, that's the sign to leave. With my pockets full and more than I had bargained for in this trip into the nether, I flew back towards the portal, banked all of the supplies where they belonged, and took a quick rest. The next morning though, it's back to work. I went over towards the iron farm, grabbed all of the iron, made a bunch of buckets, which I used to clean out the lava farm, so I'd be able to save that fuel for something later, harvested all of the tubers that I had at my base and replanted, throwing all of that to the villagers while trading all of the rotten flesh and other iron that I had left over to get as much redstone and other supplies as I could. Once that was done, I went back to the house and broke all of the pots that I had outside, using some of the pottery sherds that I had collected to put a little bit better deck decorations out in front of and around my home. With that all done, I placed down a bunch more cobblestone slabs, starting to make all of the materials required for one of the first farms that I'm going to build in this 100 days. And if you looked at the chest and you've watched a recent video of mine, you probably know what I'm up to. And it turns out <laughs> I am two cobblestone short <laughs> being able to make this whole thing fully normally. Oh, that's just wild. So the next morning I thought, let's just run away from my problems, heading south via the nether, stopping over at the ancient city to break down for a few of the skulk components, but mainly trying to get the ice here, as I figured it had been long enough and maybe the skulk sensors had reset that we wouldn't summon a warden in the times that I inevitably upset all of them. Shoving all of that into a shulker box, I flew off to a new trial chamber. This one had a lot of husks inside, which was interesting. It was something different that I got to fight against. The only problem was some of them had enchanted weapons and it started to freak me out. Ooh, okay, that was a little spicy there. I reset from the roof using my bow a little bit more effectively, taking out all of the mobs, grabbing the loot from the vaults, and then heading off to the other rooms, dealing with poison spiders for the first time. And that actually concerns me in hardcore. I need to be careful dealing with those. But getting the smooth stone from around the spawners would allow me to make the cobblestone that I need to be able to make the dispenser, to be able to make the cobblestone farm. It's cobblestone all the way down. But I finished clearing out the trial chamber, took a quick little nap in the center of danger, finished off the final couple spawners dug through the wall and flew away, making my way over towards the trail ruins where I was reminded of the... <laughs> that I basically took the long way. I'm an idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's cobblestone right there. Why did I do that to myself? <laughs> I'm such a dummy. All right, we do have... Uh... 
this to come explore later. But I already had the cobblestone in hand, so I didn't bother getting extra. You'll get to see whether or not that was a mistake in a little bit. Flying over towards a nearby nether portal, casting the lava inside, and making a portal inside the frame here that I can use to get back even quicker. The only problem was I, uh, <laughs> I didn't have a flint and steel, so I had iron. I had to go up and harvest flint from the gravel here, having to break like 12 pieces before I ever even got a single piece of flint. And that's twice now that I've been unprepared one or two items short of my goal. Let's see if this trend continues. But I flew back home via the nether, condensed and deposited all of the materials from my short stint in the trial chambers, broke down those pieces of stone with the fortune pickaxe so they became cobble, flew over towards the villagers to buy a couple pieces of redstone that I could use to craft up the piston that I could finally have what I need to complete this farm. We'll go ahead and build it tomorrow. I am just tired. You probably guessed it from the materials in the chest and the fact that I'm in Skyblock and there are no blocks that I didn't make, but we're going to make a cobblestone farm. That was the first goal of the first 100 days. It makes sense for it to be the first goal of the second 100 days. That being said, while the first one required me to manually stand in place and mine for ages on end, this one is fully automatic and produces thousands of cobblestone per hour, mainly by utilizing a TNT duper, which I didn't know about that you could actually use that didn't require coral fans or any of the other components that I don't have access to in Skyblock. So I was able to get everything up and running and we're not going to talk about how many shots it took for me to be able to hit the button to turn the system on. But as the TNT started falling and exploding and you can still hear it in the distance, the farm is running perfectly. While that started generating a lot of blocks for me, I spent some time organizing my inventory, dropping off all of the components and putting them all back where they belong, and then storing up the materials, or starting to, for a twin sister farm of this one that I'm gonna need to make that will generate basalt instead. And with only the farm being running for, what, maybe 10 minutes total? Check out the fact that there's almost a full roll of cobblestone in almost every single chest here. This means that I now have the raw materials to start building out what I want my true industrial platform to look like. We're gonna make a Borg cube looking structure that's just gonna look awesome with all the farms we could possibly pack inside. And as far as the walkway up to it, a bunch of disconnected small floating rocks, much like the way that we have our path up towards the nether portal. Once I had built out a rough version of the square that had enough space that I could start moving things over, I started breaking down the lava farm, collecting all of the lava from the top and then all of the materials, sleeping over here on the platform, and then starting to move all of the cauldron and dripstone and other materials over. While I was at it, I also broke down the floating dripstone platform that I was using to farm for dripstone points as I want to move that over to the industrial platform as well and just get the central space a little bit more clean. I started counting out where I wanted to put all of the cauldrons, getting those all in place, turning the cobblestone farm back on before heading over towards the villagers, buying a bunch more dripstone blocks that I'd be able to use to farm for more points so I could get everything up and running, setting up two parallel dripstone stone farming platforms. I also made a quick and dirty smelting setup so that I could start smelting up a lot of the cobblestone into smooth stone, flying back over and grabbing regular bricks as one of the accent blocks for the industrial area as I want to use this and make it feel very distinctly different from everything else in the skyblock world and having bricks is pretty unique. I use lanterns that I purchased from villagers as my main lighting source, setting up some copper grates to contain all of the lava so that way the natural light of the lava could also cascade down into the space, surrounding that with bricks so it directly matched the trim for the dripstone farms directly adjacent to them. Setting that up took the remainder of the day and all of the copper grates that I had, but I could always go get some in the morning. I headed south the following morning to do just that, but then I realized I had forgotten my ender chest and my shulker boxes and my good pickaxe. So I just turned right back around and headed back home, realizing that I was actually out of shulker shells, so I couldn't make any shulker boxes, so it was time to fly over towards the end portal and head out end busting. A few rockets out to the outer end, and once we were into new chunks, we were hitting really good targets right away. Look at that double city! Ho -ho! Come here, you. Bear wings, fortune three. I genuinely don't think I have fortune three. Hey, Spire! 
I'm primarily focused on taking out the shulkers right now so I could get more shells for more boxes, but I'm not going to turn away opportunities to loot the chests and get some decent diamond gear. I'm still a little short on enchantments and a few other things that I would normally have by the time I come to this dimension, so just running around and grabbing all of the supplies is really great. I did accidentally run out of arrows, so I had to rely on melee a little bit near the very end of my trip, hitting up the final couple shulkers and storing everything away. I picked up a couple ender chests while I was out here, just so I wouldn't have to go ahead and craft those, marking where I had finished my end busting adventure so I could pick up where I left off and flying off towards the closest gateway and then through the portal back to home. I quickly combined a couple of the swords that I had found to add some additional power onto my primary carry and then broke everything else down, storing it off into a couple different places and using the shulker boxes to finally break down and organize my ender chest so that I could be a little bit more efficient with everything I had stored. I also marked and named the OG00 grass block and stored off everything that I have a full inventory's worth of shulkers for carrying supplies around now. With that done, I dyed a few extra beds, taking them over towards the village so we can get a few more employees starting to work, sleeping there and watching everybody get to it. Make me more villagers. Realizing I had already locked in my enchantments, I instead just traded all of the rotten flesh that I had for emeralds, checked out the super smeltery and collected all of the lava, waited for the dripstone to start growing, throwing a bunch of points on there so it could potentially make more, cut up a whole bunch of copper and then flew over to the industrial platform to start on an upgraded and replaced bamboozler. I had used this to collect a good portion of the wood that I had made in my first 100 days. and I. I'd learned a little bit more about how to make this thing effectively so that it could be fully automatic. Sing a hopper minecart into the moss block using walls to better convey a vertical redstone signal so that way everything is behaving a little bit better. I'm actually really proud of V2 of the bamboo machine. The only problem was some of the blocks were kind of elevatoring their way up to the top. I'm not 100% sure why that was happening. But while that ran, I was just stuffing it full of bone meal, checking on the dripstone farm here and there whenever I saw new points appearing. And having two farms running, things are going well. The next morning, I tried changing up the top of the farm a little bit, both converting it to fully solid blocks with tough bricks, but also making it a few blocks higher, thinking that the items wouldn't have the ability to kind of elevate up by the bamboo breaking, and maybe that was why they were clipping into the walls. That didn't 100% address everything. It didn't fix it per se, but it was at least a little bit better. So we're gonna roll with that for right now. The farm might not be 100% lossless, but it's still good enough. So I switched out the lever for a copper bulb since it has a really nice toggleable feature. I set up a quick little comparator and had that toggling the farm on and off. Once that was done, I went over and traded in all of the rotten flesh and iron that I could spare, making myself a couple books, enchanting my elytras with mending so that they could last a little bit longer, and then doing another round of trading to pick up a silk touch book to finally name and enchant it onto my primary pickaxe. Can't believe it's taken me 113 days to get here, but here we are. I reloaded the machine once again with all of the bone meal, letting that running and watching that it's not producing exactly as much bamboo as I'd expect, but there's still a few items floating up on top of the roof, so we're gonna have to do some more debugging. And I'm gonna solve that problem by <laughs> ignoring it, flying through the nether and afterwards a trial chamber. Fought with the slime on the roof to get a few extra slime balls for redstone components and then dug into one of the factory rooms, fighting a whole bunch of strings and a breeze, clearing out all of the vaults here, mainly just getting emeralds and armor trims. I'm using all the XP to try to heal my pickaxe so I could then use that pickaxe to mine up all of the copper for around here as it's one of the main things I'm gonna use for the build palette for the industrial platform. Having a lot of the mobs being ones that I can kill at range makes it really easy to just offhand the pickaxe so I could then use it and repair and then immediately use it to mine. I was getting a few keys and I found a few chests that I hadn't looted before, going through and clearing a whole whole ton of poisonous spiders, and that in hardcore mode really scares me. The vaults themselves weren't a lot of really remarkable loot. I am hitting this after a full 100 days in world, but some of them were kind of hidden, which made me think there might have been valuables in here. Thankfully, I have a lot of shulker boxes, which means I can collect and contain everything because inventory management in these things is a pain. But there were a few things that 
I just don't have in Skyblock and there's no other way to get them. With a nice day of fighting and my pickaxe better off than when I had left, I flew my way back to the nether and returned home for a quick nap before having to spend a decent bit of time the following morning just organizing and dropping off all of the loot. That took a while. These chests are not long for this world. I'm going to have to do something to replace them. But I hopped my way over towards the industrial platform, started some more cobblestone to smelt, and then used the copper grates as the bottom of the second lava generating platform so I could just fill that in, as well as bordering around all of the drip zone. I'm buying a lot of bricks from the mason so I could use that for the upper areas of these platforms, using the bamboo to convert that into a lot of sticks to be able to power the whole thing. Once both dripstone and lava platforms were all set up, I made sure to flood as much as I could, taking some of the points from the actual lava generation and adding it to the dripstone generation. I need a lot more points for this whole thing to go exponential, and that's gonna take a while. It'll go faster if I could just do it now, and my needs for lava are a little bit lower. While that's all going, I thought, let's try, just try to get a sheep. Most of the spawn platform is jungle, which means sheep can't spawn there. So I grabbed a little bit of cobblestone and made a small little five by five platform off and away of grass outside of the spawning radius of me and where I could put it down in a plains biome, hoping that if I just let the grass grow, eventually a sheep will spawn. I'm gonna spoil it right now. I try to get sheep for most of this hundred days. I'm not going to tell you if I succeeded, but I'm going to tell you right now, they are my white whale or my white sheep. I need sheep. Okay, day 116. It's time for the other half of the block generating farms. This one is a basalt farm. It's using the exact same TNT duping mechanism, but it is originally designed to be built in the nether, which doesn't really work with wanting everything here in the overworld so it can all run at once. So I had to modify it by adding a bunch more obsidian to make everything a little bit more blast resistant and moving the TNT duper up so it caused less damage to the underlying structure. You know how I said I didn't need lava? I lied. I had to use some of that to cast into some obsidian so I could get all I needed to protect the mechanics of the farm. So I'm just watching the dripstone like a hawk for it to grow. And if you're wondering why all of this day was RPM, I, uh, I forgot to record. <laughs> I recorded the first 40 days of this in 24 hours of real life time, and I just missed one of the video files. So that's why all of day 16 and most of what you're seeing on day 17 is just replay mod. But I had a wandering trader actually spawn inside the basalt farm. Well, they spawned up on the roof and then fell down onto the platform. Trades were nothing remarkable, don't worry about that, but they had left one of their llamas in the basalt farm itself. So I leaded the llama flying up and getting it to safety, then thinking, let's lead it across a little one wide bridge to take it to the main island so I could have another pet. Unfortunately, they fell, and about here is where the 30 minutes of recording ticked over to the new file in the middle of this crisis. Okay, hold on, we can solve, we can fix this, we can fix this. <laughs> Okay, I have to go see them. I have to go see them. <laughs> Hello, friend. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll we'll save them later. <laughs> oh, oh, this is so much fun. With my newest pinata just hung from the bottom of the platform, I returned back to go work on the basalt farm, getting the last bits of the TNT duper all set up, put into place, loaded with lava, and ready to go. With all of that, I turned the farm on with a wind charge, which, looking back, might not have been the best idea. But everything was working. It was on, so far, so good. I just realized that I had built the TNT dropper one block off to the right, which means while it was still working, there was some basalt that was being left on the left-hand side due to all of the obsidian and the expanded height, meaning that it wasn't going to operate at full efficiency. It's working, but it's not fully working. So I thought, okay, let's just go up there the next morning and quickly rebuild it by just moving it one block over. I thought I could just do this by moving it one instead of having to rebuild it from scratch. But I think somewhere along the lines, I messed up pretty badly because as soon as I turned it on, uh-oh, no, not good. I don't have a, I don't have a thing.
What did I mess up? So I took a couple minutes, I debugged it. I thought I realized why the one block blew up that wasn't supposed to. So I replaced it and turned the farm back on. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what I've messed up. I don't know what I've messed up. So with everything fully exploded, I demolished the entire TNT duper, had to reset all of the cobblestone and lava that was cast around, just making a mess everywhere, and finished my night just collecting the last little bit of dripstone and setting that all up before sleeping. And the following morning, I just want to hit something. Did I seriously not get a single key from this entire... <laughs> what a scam. Now I'm even more mad. Now I want to hit something else. I took a little nap in the chamber, fought one more spawner of silverfish that didn't really have anything to offer, and then made my way through a door, finding a room that I hadn't even been in before. The entire floor was powdered snow, which is actually really exciting. So I went through clearing all of the strays here, finally getting my first ominous key from the vaults. And from here, I just couldn't stop winning. If we get it first try, I'm gonna lose it. God apple, I'll take it. <laughs> Iron block, but a god apple. Trying to preserve my helmet, I actually equipped a shield that I found in one of the chests, using that to take on the final few spawners, getting myself a broken helmet <laughs> in return for that. So I'm not only winning, but I'm mostly winning. I actually worked my way over towards another room that I hadn't cleared out of this space before, taking a quick peek through the little tunnel that I had made to see all the mobs between where the layers of the trial chamber are. But at this point, my raid omen had failed or fizzled? ended. So I was just fighting regular spawner mobs, which got me a couple regular keys, which was nice, but there was one ominous vault here. And I decided, you know, everybody's feeling superstitious about these things. Let's go gambling. I've heard a superstition. If you use it when the thing's in, you get that thing. We're going to try it. Let's see. See? It's not true, but I mean, I'll take everything else in there. That's all good. That's all good stuff. I slept in the vault, heading off in the morning, flying back through the nether and returning home. First things first was just deluding and dropping off everything. I'm trying to stay really good about organization in this world, especially since we're doing two in it. We might do three. I just want to keep everything in place. I headed over towards the mob spawner, made myself a shulker box of arrows, flying over towards the villagers, buying myself a new diamond helmet, and then trading in a whole bunch of iron and other supplies, going over to the industrial platform to check on all of the dripstone, just trying to get everything there fully automated, and breaking one of the furnaces that I'd had smelting stone this whole time to get myself up over level 30. I'm using any buckets I have to pick up all of the lava so I can get all of that going again, contemplating when I'm going to move my cobblestone farm when I saw another wandering trader on my main platform. Oh, another one. I was just mentally tuned out that it was that one over there. No, you're a new friend. Hello. What do you have? Oh, kelp is actually really good. Kelp is good. I don't think I can get kelp any other way. It's huge coral. Let's take that. And I'll take green dye because I don't have a way to cactus right now. Thank you, friend. That's awesome. Inspired by my new aquatic collection, I downed a few of the healing potions that I had just to get the glass bottles, filling that up and using one of the puffer fish that I had killed from inside one of the buckets from the previous wandering trader to make myself a bunch of extended duration water breathing potions. They will be useful down the line. We'll get to that. But now that I had that done, I planted all the kelp in the center fountain so that could all grow around all of the edges, picking up another sky block advancement and realizing 
I could have crafted it. I could have made kelp this whole time. <laughs> oh, Trog, I love this pack, but it, things hidden like that that really do upset me sometimes. I spent a little bit of time placing all of the lava I had been collecting up on top of the second area so that once I get drips on for it, it can start generating lava as well. Line always goes up. I decided to switch out all of the copper for the TNT duper for stone bricks just because it has a higher explosion rating. And I'm thinking maybe it had accidentally caught part of the booms from the duper itself. So once again, I built the TNT duper over the basalt farm with the only change from the actual original design being switching out a copper grate, which was waterlogged from leaves, which were waterlogged. So it basically does the same thing. It's just slightly more industrial looking. And wouldn't you know it, those experts kind of know what they're talking about. And once I rebuilt everything in the correct material, the whole system is up and running and it's working a lot safer this time. I did have one other small problem is that I only had two hopper minecarts under each side. So it turns out I was actually losing some of the materials on each end. But that is a problem I can solve. All I have to do is put down a couple more rails, make a few more hopper minecarts, now that I have a little bit extra iron, and replace that center wall with a third minecart. It does make a little bit more noise with everything moving back and forth, so I tried rotating all of the rails so they would face in towards the center and only succeeded in setting myself on fire. And it, uh, wasn't going well. The whole immolating myself should have probably been a little bit of a hint, so I just let the rails be horizontal. Actually, I fought with it for the better part of 10 minutes before inevitably giving up and then letting the rails be horizontal. And with three minecarts on each side, the farm is fully functional. While the TNT was duping and explosions were happening, I collected all of the lava and did a little bit of a sound check. You can't even hear it over here. That's awesome. It's still working, but you can't even... Oh, that's so good. Now to uh, move this one. <laughs> so, yes, I am going to build these a couple times. I apologize, but I promise it's only one more because I do get it right when I inevitably get to it. But I spent a little bit of time dropping off all of the materials, just kind of throwing them in shulker boxes, going through the storage for the mob farm to collect out all of the bone blocks to convert those into bone meal, which I could use to go power the bamboo machine. While that ran, I took a little bit of copper and started working on some door designs for the industrial platform, realizing that things were a little close to each other, maybe more so than I liked. I went and checked to the basalt farm, having already a couple rows of basalt in every single chest, going down and trying to commit to the door design, putting everything in place before it started storming. And this one was a thunderstorm, and a good portion of a lot of my platforms is made out of wood, so I don't want to take that risk. I deoxidized and crafted down a copper block into a few lightning rods, placing one on top of the bamboo machine, one on top of the arch in front of the villager's home, and one on top of my house over on the main platform. This should protect everything, I hope. I return back over to the industrial platform, starting to put down a bit of a copper border around the whole thing, counting out from each direction, and then building up. I want this thing to be a 3D cube, a Borg cube of industry. The only problem is, I think I made it a little too small. With the additional height, I also need to expand the size of the platform. So I built out in each direction just to figure out where and how far I needed to go, breaking down and trying to save as much of the copper as I could, building downward with water to make the lowest part of the floor and seeing that I'm actually spawning glow squids underneath me. But I've been on this industry platform for like two days, so I changed it up and went and slept inside my home. I then went right back to work on the industrial platform, double and triple and quadruple checking every single path out, trying to make sure that I keep this thing with one central block. I want this to be a perfect cube. I have an idea of what I want the pattern to look like. So I have to count out every single bridge to make sure they are all exact. And don't worry, I will get confused and I will mess it up. And I will question all of this at some point in the future because you all know that I don't math well. 
but I got everything placed and ready to go, continuing to keep an eye on the dripstone farm so that I could fill all of that before going over and breaking down the cobblestone farm where it exists now, moving everything over to a chest in the opposite corner of where I put the basalt farm so that I can rebuild that the following day to get everything done and dusted. I had to get all of the chests all secured, running over whenever a piece of dripstone grew. And in getting all of the cobblestone smelted and ready to go and setting up a little bit of an auto smelting system, I lost count and celebrated a little too early. Hey. Oh no, we're still off by one. I got so excited, I thought I was done. It's still missing one. Why? Okay, that embarrassing aside, let's build something that doesn't require me actively counting and making sure everything is correct. You might get this idea from the bridge and from the way that I've made my way up towards the nether portal. I like the idea of a bunch of individual floating islands instead of a couple really big solid geometric patterns. The one industrial cube is going to be the exception. So I grabbed a whole bunch of cobblestone and started working on some rough base plans. I don't want perfect, pretty platforms. I want a bunch of individual floating islands. So I started using cobblestone to mark out all of the borders, seeing a piece of dripstone growing and actually celebrating this time. Now it's done. It's finally done. And we get to do it all over again. Uh... Heading back to it and just kind of somewhat randomly placing down areas where I want islands to go. Especially around the villagers, I'm gonna have multiple independent floating islands that I'm going to move the villagers to to have each little island have a couple specific trades or a couple specific workers on each. I'm also trying to play around with altitude so that the whole base just isn't on one level, which is something that I usually fall prey to. I wanna include more verticality in the space. But instead of just working with frames, I actually want to get one of these done sooner rather than later. So I built across the center using water to go down a little bit and then started making a roughly rock shaped island that's made mainly out of cobble and smooth stone just for right now as I'm getting everything sorted and I have a lot of those materials. I did forget to light it. So when I went to resupply, I had a few skeletons spawning in on it, which did make having to go back and forth a little more dangerous, but some occasional combat is always nice. I kept working on that through the night into day 126 when I finally kind of finished the overall roughly bowl shape that I was looking for and then went down on the other side so it wasn't all off of one singular point and instead is more of a blob island than something that looks like it was clawed out and pulled out by the roots. I headed over and grabbed all of the dripstone, setting that up on the secondary lava farm so I could start more lava production, returning back to the island, throwing down some lanterns so I could use water and other things inside the island and the light source won't wash away and I don't have a mob farm inside this thing. Once the whole thing was done, I flew away getting a rough idea of how it would end up being shaped, breaking down all of the crop plots near the front of the original platform that I had started on and moving them over to here. I'm gonna make this my kind of farming island. I'm gonna plant everything over here. It'll still be in render distance, but it'll have a dedicated space that I can decorate to match the agricultural need of this little area. The only problem is it's gonna be entirely brown unless I go get some regular grass, which I was able to silk touch up with a pickaxe, moving it over here and then realizing I am already out of dirt. Besides, that platform didn't work anyway. Not nearly as good as all of my dripstone farming. I did have a zombie who appeared I don't know where, try to bite my ankles and set me on fire, so that was a good start for the day. Combining a lot of my dirt with gravel to make coarse dirt and then pathing it and then breaking it all down. That got me a little bit more, so the grass has area to spread, but it's still nowhere near enough to clear the island. And I'm still frustrated that I don't have sheep, so I'm thinking let's reduce the amount of passive mobs that I have and maybe that will make them spawn a little bit easier. I eliminated a few of the chickens because they know what they did, making myself a few brushes because might as well multitask here, heading over and doing a little bit of trading, throwing all of the rotten flesh from the mob farm at the cleric just to get XP to repair my pickaxe. I crafted up a new brewing stand to make a second cleric, starting to level them up by just throwing rotten flesh at their face and then buying all of their redstone. I traded in all of the iron and just did everything I could to get my pickaxe repaired. And thankfully, thankfully, one of the librarians gave me what I really really wanted. Glass. Oh, that's huge. 
I didn't even realize how important that would be. With a brand new set of blocks unlocked, glass and diable glass will be really handy for doing, you know, just basic building. You don't realize these things that you miss until it's way too late. I flew through the nether towards the trial chamber portal. This time, instead of going to the trial chamber, going to the trail ruins, and I bet you I've flipped those names multiple times in this video or another before. I landed there, throwing down a whole bunch of lanterns, fighting off the one skeleton that was guarding this space, looking at all of the gravel and dirt and knowing what I have to do. I want every single block. I want this whole thing. This will be useful. And I took every single block. I worked on this thing from the top down and like the reverse of a montage where you see somebody printing out a build layer by layer. I just slowly shaved things off of this, making sure to brush all of the suspicious gravel to get whatever unique items I can find inside, as well as every single block that I could. And while I'm doing this, while I'm working my way through there, I am gonna make a bet with you. I bet some of you aren't subscribed and I don't normally do sub callouts in these videos at all because I just like telling the story. But you're 25 days into a 100 days video. You've probably been watching for about 40 minutes and I'd be willing to bet you're not subscribed. So if you're not and you're probably having fun, you've been here for 45 minutes, I'd ask you go subscribe and go leave a comment, say something about cookies. Don't worry, that will make sense as soon as the montage is over, but say something about cookies and I bet I bet we're gonna see a whole bunch of new people join the Lagundo community. You would be wonderful. I would appreciate you so much if you did. But I probably should explain what that is. And uh, when I found my last armor trim, this is why. Wait, that's the last one. That's the last one. I think I have all four now. I do. Yes, I'm excited too, Cookie. I'm very excited too. Stop barking at me, please. That's not even what I'm here for. This, this is what I'm here for, but that's a win. I'll take it. We're going to end up leaving most of the bottom layer. I have a little bit more dirt to go. Let's finish this thing. But with my dog really excited for me getting all of the armor trims and me completing the final layer that would not just send me into the void if I mined it out from underneath my feet, this thing is successfully packed into four shulker boxes and I have a ton of loot to work with rainbow all the way around the sky? I guess if the earth was really flat, then that's how it would look for us too. Don't think about it. Just don't, don't think about it. But look at it. We got our hose. We have so much bricks, so many just random bits and bobs. And then all of this is dirt. I'm so excited. And then we have all the pottery shirts. We have all the trims too. Let's get this all packed up in our pockets and off towards home. We fly. Cha! There we go. Now we have all the dirt we need to finish this whole thing. I wonder if we could just do it based solely off of the dirt we already have. No, the answer is no. I've done a lot of it. There's still a gap. I have to do the whole coarse dirt conversion thingy. Ugh. So failing that, it's time to head over to the industrial island and convert all of the dirt, right? Right? Oh, I was not paying attention. I broke my shovel and I didn't even convert it. That's my fault. That's my fault. That's on me. Iron shovel of shame. So this time I went into the base of the island just to change scenery here a little bit, making sure to actually path all of the blocks before breaking them down. So that way I had just enough dirt to fully close off the top of this island, throwing down a couple torches so that no mobs would spawn, flying back home to grab a few additional supplies and starting to cut up and collect some of the detail blocks that I'm gonna use to actually decorate this thing. The following morning, I flew back over to the island, removed a few spiders from on top of it 
it and then started placing down some boulders and other decorations. I'm putting down fences to be able to put the lanterns on so the lighting looks just slightly more fancy, setting up some crop plots by hiding the water underneath the boulder or underneath slabs. This did mean I fell inside and I tried to use wind charges to get back up, but we're not gonna talk about that as I continued working on getting the farm all set up, getting everything hydrated and setting up a little bit of a waterfall off the edge of the island so that there's just something to catch on to. I feel like that's a nice visual element. I used some of the gravel on one side to have some additional color and texture on the side of the island, throwing down all of the torches as it started getting dark so no mobs would spawn like that creeper over there on the other outline, running back and grabbing all of my seeds, potatoes, and carrots, planting those in the crops, grabbing some barrels, and moving all, and I mean all of the crops I had collected in the first hundred days over to this island instead, growing the spruce, which converted all the dirt to podzol, which would let me plant mushrooms, but also makes me think, why did I spend so long letting this all turn to grass? But as the sun set and everything was in place, I'm loving how this looks. One island done. <laughs> oh, I have so much more work ahead of me. There we go, like a spruce farming island. Needs a little house right there. Oh, I should show you why I was farming basalt. This is actually a really important thing. So this is a crafting recipe in the mod pack. I should turn this on while I'm around. Cool. You take cobblestone and basalt. You make deep slates. We can have deep slate. Before I did that, I did my industrial district chores before flying over towards the island using a stone cutter to convert a lot of the deep slate into stairs and slabs and started making a tiny little house. It's not one for me to live in. It is literally just here that A, I can stick some villagers into it at some point in the future and B, to really complete the island. Well, you know what they say, home is where the singular torch is. I actually just wanted a really nice garden area. I love it. I love it. Another. I flew back over towards the storage area, looting up all of the other shulker boxes from the trail ruins, realizing that I had completely exhausted the potential storage space of this area and I barely stored everything inside. I have to kind of overload a lot of the chests and what is being stored inside all of them, converting one of them from shulker shells to just be trims and pottery sherds and all of the other rare items. Finishing all of my organization into the night and just admiring what I had built. Oh, that does look so cool in the distance though now. Oh, I love it. It's like a little sister house to the one that I built for myself. The following day though, it's time to get technical again. This time going back and rebuilding the cobblestone farm in the proper place on the actual industrial platform. Now I built this farm about four times now, twice in UHCG, once already here in Skyblock and now building it again. So we're gonna just very quickly speed through this thing. I know how it works. I know how everything goes. And I was able to, as it started raining, which was totally totally not ominous at all, get everything up and running and get the farm back in operation. Cobblestone's being blown up right on the tick it's being created, and as I slept to reset the weather, I'm just celebrating because we have reached peak industry. Excellent, excellent. Finally actually up and running, so let's activate both. And now fly away. Peace and quiet over here while we're just producing blocks over there like a madman. I love it. I'm so excited. With me now at peak industry and blocks being produced, I broke down the remaining outline of the garden plot that I had here previously, breaking down a lot of the other things on the opposite side that is still populated with a few mobs that will get to moving soon. I smelted up a few logs with the stairs to make myself a couple torches, casting a little bit of obsidian so I'd be able to make myself a return portal because I'm going to go out and exploring. I flew through the nether out towards the end portal and then just 
flew beyond, coming across a whole bunch of ocean monuments and a mushroom island. A little bit past that was a very not sunken ruins, which was a really good source of sand. Sand is actually the thing that I've had the most trouble in collecting, and there's a few suspicious sand blocks here that I'm able to brush with the hope of picking up a sniffer egg. I didn't end up with either of those because that actually spawns in suspicious gravel, not sand, but I didn't know that in the time. I'm just telling you what I was thinking. I'm not head empty no thoughts, I'm more head empty mostly incorrect thoughts. But there was a trial chamber nearby and I needed a whole bunch of copper blocks, so I slept there, going through the fighting the following morning, clearing out all of the pots for more sherds and bricks, fighting a lot of strays. I got really lucky that all of the skeletons I fought were strays, and I didn't have to deal with the bogged much at all. Shulker boxes are pulling their weight when it comes to the overall inventory organization, going through a lot of the chests, finding myself to another factory area, and having keys to spare from several different other trial chamber runs to be able to make sure I can unlock every single vault here. I'm also very careful with these dispensers now because they can hold some really useful things like these lingering potions of weakness, which I can use to craft up lingering arrows to be able to convert villagers way easier. And if you're looking for the order of operations because we just talked about something like this in the last UHCG episode, I did UHCG first and then I was here. So so a lot of the lessons I learned from doing this in ultra hardcore made doing it in regular hardcore a little bit easier. And if you're not watching UHCG, right after you're finished with this video, I'd recommend it. I'll leave a link to the first episode down in the description. It is, in my opinion, the best set of YouTube videos I've ever made, and I really hope you go and enjoy them. I know the 100 days gets a lot further when it comes to reach because it's a lot more easily digestible, but if you like what I'm doing here, I have a feeling you'll like those videos too, okay? Okay. But while all the carnage is happening in the background and I'm busy promoing you on other things, let's return to what I was doing in the vaults. I don't even have my microphone in front of my face. I'm a pin cushion, but I'm so excited. With the core secured, I kind of have everything I want from this place. And it's now just the place itself that has a lot of value for me. So I stashed away everything, just tried to organize my inventory, clearing out the final few ominous spawners to get myself a few extra keys for other loot that I'll have to collect down the way. It did get a little hairy at one point, getting me down to only three hearts where I felt it was worthwhile to maybe consume a god apple, get myself up back up to full and clearing out way too many strays that I had let spawn. I triggered too many spawners at once. But I bowed down the remaining mobs, had to deal with a few children who had been given knives. Who gave the kids knives? Clearing out the final couple chests, stashing everything away, and taking a rest. And I'm not gonna lie, I spent all, and I mean all, of day 137 just raking down the trial chamber. Literally slicing it and shearing off layers and layers of copper and tough bricks and everything I could take. That didn't ruin the structural integrity of the floor, mind you. I also got a whole four white concrete from the eyes of the skeleton, which is actually kind of rare because I can't get concrete easily until I have a way to get a lot more sand and you can't dupe sand. Terracotta? that I can use. Concrete is actually really hard, and copper would be really hard too if it weren't for trial chambers, so I'm very excited to have all of this. I slept to reset the thunderstorm, flying out of the trial chamber the following morning, seeing a few floating structures, and deciding to pop over towards an ancient city, as I had been pretty lucky right now, and I did just have to use a god apple to keep myself alive. I got a few things, some silk touch books, some other enchanted books, a few pairs of diamond pants that feel pretty near perfect, but I was able to not only replace place my god apple, but also pick up the silence armor trim, getting me even that much closer to literally having all of the trims despite not having 99.9% .9 of the world. I did play this one a little bit more recklessly, just opening chests. I don't have wool to silent shriekers, so I just kind of have to, accidentally summoning a warden and setting things off. It's time to go. Hi, buddy. <laughs> nope, nope, we're out. <laughs> we're out of that. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
<laughs> that was potentially a little dumb, but that was fun. <laughs> Okay, it's a regular gold now. Okay, I have, I have loot to drop off. With my inventory fully organized, I actually grabbed a couple pieces of obsidian just so I could build a portal, deciding to venture out further before turning around, going and fully just ranging out into the void. Stopping by a few different buried treasures, very excited for not only the contents of the chests, but the sand itself, hitting three of those up, grabbing all of the supplies before passing some more trial chambers and seeing a pillager tower with an iron golem falling into the void as I came within render distance. The chest up there had a goat horn, but not one of the fun ones, but the next pillager tower over had one of my favorites. That one's always fun, especially in a multiplayer server because it's the one that actually plays from a raid and you could potentially jump scare somebody if they're working with villagers and aren't looking at the top of their screen. But I kept ranging outward, passing by a few ocean monuments, racing the water underneath the monument itself, hitting up a few other POI where sand was and brushing the blocks while I'm at it. Is that? I got a st I got a sniffer right. Okay, I need another one. I was kind of really hoping to find this. This is like the big thing I wanted. Please. Yes, I got two sniffer eggs. <laughs> oh, we're gonna cause so much trouble with this. Oh, that's so good. But I just kept pushing. I really need to find another way to find sand. And then I saw the cactus. <gasps> yes. Please don't blow up. Please don't blow up. Please don't blow up. Oh. Yes. And this is really good, not only for sand, but for sandstone, breaking down all of the upper layers. Once again, just shaving them off from top to bottom, very similar to how I did for the trail ruins, getting myself a whole bunch of additional materials. I then went down to the lower level, the actual archeology span site, brushing out all of that, getting a few diamonds and actually really nice loot. But again, another stack or so of sand. And I thought, you know what? That's a pretty good place to stop and turn around, building a portal over here marking it in the desert, just seeing how far I had actually gone. It was a couple thousand blocks at this point. That is a lot easier to navigate in the nether. It's only an eighth of the distance, so I was able to get home in just a couple rockets, making sure to leave a marker over that portal so I'd be able to find it in the expanse of nothingness that is the nether. And with a very successful ranging out into nothingness, I went to sleep. And I'm not gonna lie, it took literally all the daylight of day 140 just organizing inventory. I collected six, seven odd shulker boxes worth of stuff, all of it needing to go into different places, needing to figure out what chests it even belongs in. I'm overflowing things like the stone chest while the copper one is just an absolute mess with all of the different variants and versions. And don't get me started on smithing tablets and sherds and everything else. By the time I was done, it was both raining and dark. So I had a bunch of mobs that had actually spawned on the border surrounding my home island, meaning that they had a path to me that I could have just gotten drop creepered while I was working with all of those chests. That would not have been great. So I shaved off all of the sugar cane, took a quick nap to just clear everything out. The following morning was mainly focused on not that, instead going over to the industrial platform, setting up a proper copper door for the front of what I want this thing to look like. And I'm building it to be vertically symmetrical as well as symmetrical around the edges, minus some minor texturing, so it's not gonna be just exactly one-to-one. -one. I headed over towards the mob farm where I had to uh, send an enderman to go meet a leather worker that we don't talk about. Flying over towards the remainder of my villages, doing a bunch of trading to repair my pickaxe, which had gotten dangerously low. I basically picked up everything. The iron farm is always running because it's here in spawn chunks, and <laughs> you never build a farm in spawn chunks unless you absolutely want it to be there. But that allowed me to do a whole bunch of trades, get everything 
getting repaired and then immediately get back to work. Setting up with a little bit of an unoxidized copper pattern with the copper bulbs in between some of the circles, just counting out everything and realizing that it perfectly worked that I could set up three by three by three panels on each of the walls to be able to set up a very nice decoration. Once that was finished and I knew the actual front wall, I started placing down some copper bulbs in the islands themselves, making them slightly more differently shaped, differently textured, properly illuminated, and then being reminded, oh yeah, illumination, going around and adding some additional to the actual outer edge to make sure that no mobs would be spawning on all of that. Instead, seeing mobs spawning on the edges of all of the other islands that I had made for myself. So I threw down a few torches on the one here, took another quick nap, and on the day the meaning of a hundred plus the meaning of light. This joke doesn't work when I do a sequel. Oh no, what am I going to do with myself? Finally went around all of the borders, throwing lanterns down that I had bought from the villagers yesterday to make sure no mobs would be spawning there. I broke down the cobblestone that was underneath the grass platform of spawning failure, working on the pattern, continuing that over towards the outer edge, then coming up with this idea of putting a light on the very corner, which I will change because it doesn't look symmetrical and I just, I will get to that, don't worry. I set up a bunch of an interior stone brick pathway, carrying that all the way around, making sure to carry the pattern over so that I also had it on the horizontal sides as well as the vertical sides of the cube, which at the moment is still just a square. We'll get to making it more cuboid in the future. But I turned on both of the stone producing farms, making myself a whole bunch of deep slate, heading over and trading a lot of the emeralds to the villager to get myself a whole bunch of glass and using that deep slate in the stone cutter to make myself some different railings, throwing lanterns in place to just kind of make everything look very industrial, but using a lot of the blocks that I didn't have access to in the first hundred days to make sure that this is distinctly something that I did in my second iteration. Once it was dark, I was reminded to go finish putting all of the torches around all of the borders on other islands. And then I actually dug into the bottom of the first island that I completed, replacing some of the stone and cobblestone with cobbled deep slate to just add one more color and a little additional texture to the bottom bottom of the island itself. That did require me to accidentally break some of the glow berries that I had set up. So I had to fly back underneath the island, placing those while kind of crashing into the stone, which is trickier than it looks and slightly risky as I only had three rockets left when I finally landed back on solid ground. The following morning, I got back to work on dirt conversion, pathing a lot more coarse dirt with this iron shovel, replacing some of it with some of the grass from the front right paddock, which I still haven't demolished yet, so that grass would spread, placing a lot of that on the back of the island, so that way I could start working on expanding the platform. I flew around for a little while, just trying to figure out what I was going to do next, realizing that I really shouldn't be using an iron shovel in part two of this series, so flying over towards the villagers and picking up a shovel before going to sleep here. And the following morning, as I was just making myself some more dirt, I had this kind of light bulb realization out of nowhere. Wait, I just realized I can do this way better. You probably been screaming at your monitor. I just realized I can do this way better. So I crafted myself up the perfect hoe, putting down a lot of coarse dirt in place and then hoeing it, which turns it into dirt in place. If I click twice, it just converts it into cropland, which will inevitably just convert back into dirt. One seed block of grass later and a whole area is just done. I don't know why I hadn't done that sooner. So with that finished, I wanted to give that time to grow. So I dug down from the water block that's hidden right in front of my house to start filling out the bottom of what I want the main island to be. I'm actually gonna use this to hold a storage room so that I could finally upgrade all of those chests that I am having a very hard time keeping empty, heading over towards some more chests that I have a very hard time keeping empty, grabbing all of the gunpowder and bones and rotten flesh and putting them to either rockets or trading or crafting appropriately. But then I remembered I can make a little bit of this a little bit faster. So I actually crafted myself up some crafters. With a couple of those in my inventory, I headed over towards the industrial island. I shut off the explosion farms for right now, so I didn't need to worry about them and tinkered around with figuring out the crafters myself and what it would take to convert all of the bones into bone blocks automatically. It's really just two craft cycles. So I need to power them basically every tick because there's no secondary recipe. I need to worry about. And I did set up something where, oh wait, there's a secondary recipe. It, it's white dye. Oh no. 
So like I was saying, there's a secondary recipe I have to worry about, so I have to be really careful about how I'm powering this thing. But I did eventually figure it out. Making it all horizontal made everything work really, really nicely. I don't have to worry about hopper speed or anything else like that. And as the sun rose, I had set up a auto bone block maker. I can basically just throw bones in the chest and they will be converted and compressed automagically. But at this point, some of my gear is actually starting to take a little bit of a beating. So I went over towards the villager platform, buying a couple mending books and some more redstone, mainly for XP. So I could actually start enchanting that onto all of my stuff and to get all of that a little bit easier repaired. I went to all of the mob chests to pull out all of the gunpowder, collapsing that all down, taking all of the bone blocks over to the new auto crafting setup that I had just set up. All of the rotten flesh went to all of the clerics, all of the bone blocks went to bone meal, went to the bamboo machine, and then I took my myself continuing to build out the bottom platform of the island underneath my home, which is going to be my main storage space. I'm just making a bit of a skeleton framework that it looks like a bit of a basket almost with a platform that I can safely land on and a couple different legs giving me the rough shape of what I want the island to be. I'm being very careful to torch up everything as I go because I don't just want a massive mob farm as this space is underneath the most full island so far, which means that it's going to be constant in darkness unless I'm really careful about how I do this. I have a ton of cobblestone. That's not the problem. Smooth stone was starting to run out because I needed to refresh all of the lava buckets in the auto smelter, finally adding a chest for lava bucket overflow to just have that all completely mind free as I built through the evening and into the following day where I was just locked in. I had my podcast on. I was doing my thing. I am just placing blocks and roughly shaping out what I want this island to be layer by layer, block by block and I just kept going. I could not be stopped. It was one in the morning and I had nothing else on my mind. I exist only to place blocks. I actually fully completed about half of the island in little segments, just getting it all the way from the very bottom to where the top of the thing would be, going to the absolute utmost trim that I had placed some 50 blocks ago and now having a really nice shell that I could build in. Yo, okay, it's a little boxy over there, but honestly, that's looking cool. <laughs> it's gonna make the rest of this island a little weird, but we can manage it. But now that it's there, I kind of want to just keep going at it. And the next target is the mobs over here. There's enough of a grass patch off to the right of where my house is that I could go ahead and move everything. And now I'm realizing why I didn't use the hoe method primarily, as it doesn't give me any dirt block items that I could then use to craft more. So I had to start over from only having like four blocks of dirt going through the four, eight, 16, 32, 64 to be able to actually make enough dirt to be able to fully complete that area all the way out to the edge. I gave myself a quick little nap and the following morning went and shaved all of the sugarcane, harvested all of the melons and pumpkins over on the crop farm, trading a few of those into a few villagers and actually finding a couple of villagers that didn't have jobs. I can fix that though. I made another lectern, waited for them to come and learn some magic and then immediately got something awesome. What the heck? I feel like I have to buy that. I locked in the density trade, got myself looting three, took all of the iron and shoved that into the toolsmith's faces and then accidentally made a grave error. Not what I meant to do. <laughs> oh no, that's so many worthless pickaxes. Picking up the last of my books, making myself a barrel of shame that would contain all of the stone pickaxes that I had accidentally purchased. After that, I headed over towards the storage area and my island distractions are over. I finally crafted myself up the mace now that I could fully properly enchant it. Having to do a little bit of trading just for levels to get myself a little bit of glass and lanterns and having somebody be like, oh, we're doing capitalism? No, 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 you don't go fraternizing with the enemy. Ooh. Only red sandstone I'm ever gonna see. Blue orchids. Cactus, yes. Cyan die, I'll even take the cyan die. Thank you, my friends. Stand by one second. I've genuinely never got to play with this before. <laughs> 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 
they disappeared. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay, well, we gotta go do something with that. <laughs> oh. Playing around with my brand new toy, I realized my helmet didn't have protection, so I just went and grabbed a couple of protection books and smacked that on there, thinking, you know, I have a brand new really powerful weapon. Might as well go do something with it, right? Oh. <laughs> now that I think about it, I don't have this tree. <laughs> I mean, as long as we're here. So I harvested up the crimson tree and then flew over towards where I could find a bastion. And it's time for Gundo to smash. With my looting of former brethren complete, I started flying home, passing by a warped island, which actually gave me the final wood type and a bunch of warped nylium, which I can just expand with bone meal, so that will be helpful. I walked out of the portal right as the sun was starting to rise, but before the day actually properly ticked over, I was able to take everything and throw it into chests. We are reaching the point of just maximum entropy when it comes to the storage system, so I can't finish building this island soon enough. When the day finally actually ticked over, it was day 151 and we're over the halfway point and heading towards the finish line. I spent a little bit of time organizing and moving the contents from around the bottom of the current mob farm, just gonna get into chests and stored away on the main platform because this thing is not long for this world. I have a couple double chests full of gunpowder, multiple of arrows, you'd swear I was playing Rust and I was preparing for a raid, so much so that I sent a lot of that ammunition off to the void. With that done, I did a little bit more organizing, taking all of the animals on the current grass paddock on spawn and moving them up to the grass patch next to the island. Well, almost all my animals. And here's where I'd put my sheep. If I had any. Once all the living things were moved, I broke down all the fences and stairs and the grass itself, replacing it up on the top island, almost finishing this side of the surface before heading back over to the industrial island and mining up all of my dripstone before the end of the night. And while I've been working on the surface of this place, I do want to think about the bottom of it as well. I want to add a statement piece to the side of the main island, that being a custom built geode encased into the wall. So you have this pop of purple and white blocks right off the side of all of the stones. So I flew to the closest current geode, breaking down every single block that wasn't a budding amethyst block and making a platform of copper grates to be able to stand on. This thing is almost always loaded as long as I keep my chunks up high enough, which means it should always be generating amethyst whenever I'm working at spawn. So having it set up in its maximum potential, that's useful. I then flew over towards the spruce island, finally broke the berry bush here and destroyed it, grabbing all of the dirt. And I was reminded, spruce. So I had a bit of an epiphany. Oh my god, I only have four spruce saplings. Okay, I have a fortune hoe though, so we should be fine. This is kind of an all or nothing gamble, I guess, isn't it? Oh no. That's a lot of pods all. Which is a lot of dirt. Oh, we are back in business. Having now another way to produce dirt that didn't require a bunch of dirt and gravel to start off, I now had another way to expand my island. Following morning, I made myself another moss platform. It's time to correct for some mistakes in my first video. Okay, as long as you're planting big trees. I really, really, really want jungle wood back very badly. I made sure to use a fortune hoe on all of these leaves, recouping all of the saplings I started with and ending up with two extras. And then I chopped down the rest of the wood and it turns out y'all were right in the comments. We got eight. Okay. This might be sustainable again. <laughs> oh, 
all of this became, oh, that's awesome. I fortuned all the leaves, chopped down all the tree and shoveled all the dirt, getting myself over multiple stacks of all of those materials, all of which will be very useful as I'm gonna be working with a lot of wooden materials very soon. I built out the remainder of the back of the platform, fully completing one half of the grass of the main major island, flying around to get a little bit of a view of everything before going to empty out the iron farm and trading a lot of that over with the villagers to get some more bricks to start thinking about the materials that I'm gonna use on the interior. The next morning, I put down the last little bit of dirt that I had left in my pockets before breaking down the wall behind the current chest platform and starting to think where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make a little bit of a staircase down. I want this thing like sunk into the island and space to build above it using bricks for the majority of the stairs, just getting a very basic interior platform. I'm using all of the mud bricks that I have so that this interior has a really nice floor sound whenever you're walking around on it using just whatever other materials I can to figure out how big of a platform I can actually make. And using just the mud bricks, I was just short of a three block wide gap and I am going to want to go a little bit bigger. So, oh wait, it, it, it's off center. Oh no. Fixing that, I replaced and moved everything over so it was all nice and even. I went up to my main house thinking, you know what I really should have is a cheeky way down into the storage room from up in this house. I checked a few spots in the house itself. None of them lined up evenly with the exact center, but it does work for allowing me to elytra back up. I'll have to do something about that and lining them up later. The next morning though, I need to head out because I don't have any more building materials. So let's instead focus on some destruction. I hit up a few of the small POIs on the way, picking up whatever treasures from inside, but primarily looking for sand. I'm gonna need a bunch of it for what I plan to do. So I flew over in the direction of the first stronghold that I had found, which I think in a normal world would be completely underwater as there's a ton of ocean ruins around it that I'm able to shovel up a whole bunch of sand. I flew from one to the next, making sure to collect everything and leave some of the suspicious sand blocks behind as I had forgotten a brush. Landing at a nearby jungle temple, going to grab all of the redstone components from in there and a few raw diamonds, which is a bonus. Digging through the walls to give myself some natural light while I picked up the pistons and the mossy cobblestone as they are a really nice decorative block and I don't have a moss farm to fully automate the production of it just yet. And speaking of really powerful farms, I found something the following morning, which was pretty interesting. Oh, a witch farm would be bonkers. A witch farm could be huge at some point in the future, but we really need to make sure that we're gonna have the time to do it. I don't know if that's a 200 days thing. Maybe that's a 300 days thing. But at this point, I'm just flying off in a random direction, seeing what I can see, looting anything that seems useful on the way. And there's a big old ancient city right here in front of me, which seems pretty useful. So I figured I'd hit up a few of the chests right inside and luck was on my side that day. Heck yeah, another double up on my god apples. Oh, that's another one. And that's a warden. Hi, buddy. How you doing? I'm out of here. <laughs> Let's go land on the trial chamber instead. This is a safe bit of land to stop on. I'll take another god apple, sure. Drop this off, get myself a new shulker. I'm really trying to find another trail ruins. That could be really, really positive. And you know, when I make comments like that, I don't always leave them in the video, but I just make them in case something like this happens. That way I can always claim streamer luck. There we go, I was hoping for that. Yes. Oh, it's all snowy. I didn't even realize it's all snow covered. Let's land somewhere safe. Did I luck out? No oak, which is unfortunate. This is the only way I can think of that I could get oak. If one of these trees spawns and happens to be oak instead of spruce, maybe? Maybe? Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you watch me demolish another one of these. I just need a bit more mud bricks, which we're gonna get ourselves right here, and some fancy 
glazed while we're at it. But with a few bricks in my pocket, I flew off making another really useful discovery. A renewable way to make ice would be really useful. It's great in farms, but it could be another really good aesthetic block to use later. But as I continued making my big wide circle, I passed by another ancient city, grabbing a whole bunch of enchanted books and summoning another warden, which I immediately flew away from, making my way all the way over towards the first trail ruins that I had found, flying over towards the portal that I had made here and using that to fast travel my way back home, dropping off a lot of the materials in the current chests and combining books using the levels that I had just to try to save a little inventory space. I had almost six stacks of sand and combining that with a lot of the gunpowder that I had collected, we're gonna demolish this mob farm and we're gonna do it in style. Maybe it's the fact that I've been in this world longer than any other world, but I feel like being silly. This could be fun. I'm gonna take this screenshot and post it on the Discord server just to freak people out. Does it have flint? Ah, oh, it doesn't have flame. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta do a thing. Actually, let's take advantage of this. I actually decided to double down, going in, breaking a little bit of the roof, killing the few spiders, and getting some additional TNT on the middle and interior of the actual farm itself. That did not nearly as much damage as I was expecting. Actually, it wasn't too bad. With the explosion being really pretty to look at, but not a lot happening upstairs. Man, that sounds like people are actually describing me. Is that people how would, de is that how people would describe me? Probably not. I did go through the rather arduous manual task of demolishing the thing block for block, really expecting a golem to spawn when I got down a little bit too close to the iron farm and then having to push that golem off into the void to avoid myself getting yeeted by them unintentionally. And with that, the base was looking a lot more clean. Oh my goodness. It feels so weird having that not be there. All we gotta do now is move that iron farm and we're cooking. And it turns out removing the farm didn't exactly remove all the mobs from spawning in this place. I went ahead and broke down the remainder of the chests, burning whatever loot I had left inside. Cause at this point I had thousands of arrows and I wasn't gonna be trading any of the little scraps that were left in there. I then broke down the platform, making it a lot nicer looking and broke down the bridge as well. Cause I wanna go for a much more parkour civilization kind of vibe and having to jump around my base instead of just walking perfectly safe. I made myself another moss platform, this time not using it for a tree, just having it for the moss blocks themselves, clearing out the lava farms and then taking the mossy cobblestone that I had just gotten from the jungle temple and the moss that I had just made to make a little bit more natural and weathered looking platforms. Each of which with a copper bulb in the center, which nicely ties into both the industrial platform and the central one as a nice transition between the two. And if if you're thinking that doesn't match the central platform at all, trust me, I do have a plan for what that's gonna look like. Just give me time, trust the process. But I finished all of the individual segments, connecting it to the current central platform and having torch lighting in place as I didn't have enough copper bulbs to put everywhere. And I'm really liking the way it looks. The following morning, I emptied out the iron farm to make myself a whole stack worth of buckets. Well, actually four stacks worth of buckets because of how buckets stack, it's weird, I don't know. Heading down underneath, using a little bit of cobblestone as a temporary bridge and building out the underside of all of those platforms. So they're not just one block thick, they actually look like floating boulders with vines and foliage carrying down off of them to give it a very natural vibe. I even threw in a little bit of deep slate for a little bit of contrast and just 
color coordination, getting everything set up and each of the platforms fully solid and fully built all the way over. I even did the half of the one that currently exists on the main island because I know I'm gonna wanna do the other half of it and building that little bridge underneath, feeding the void with cobblestone. It's not something I wanna do often, but it's something I will do when it's necessary. And I'm not gonna lie, as soon as they were all done, I just jumped bouncing from one side to the other, really enjoying my new bridge with finger quotes and everything, connecting up and giving you an idea of what I want this base to look like when I am done with this video. I then took the materials that I had collected from the trail ruins, heading to the interior new or soon to be new storage room that I'm working with and finishing out a little bit of a design idea, using the glazed terracotta and brick for a central fountain area and finishing off the platform with the mud brick around. I'm using just a little bit of deep slate and then brick for the walls to give a very earth tone, natural vibe to this storage room that is kind of unlike anything that I have in the whole place because a lot of the blocks here are more expensive to make and that feels a little bit more viable for a 200 days video. You know what I mean? Once I had the shape all figured out, I did a little bit of texturing with packed mud in a few places, added a few slabs to give some depth and verticality to the central fountain border, and then just went ahead and built out the top of the rim and put sandstone underneath the water platform. The following day, I flooded all of that, planted a bunch of moss, and put down some bamboo at the back to bring in a little bit of a natural element to the space. Figuring out exactly would be the center of the fountain, which turned out to be right next to the stoop to my house on the upper level, so it kind of lines up, if not perfectly. I grabbed a little bit of jungle logs just to make some borders on the bamboo, and then it's just placing chests. Dozens and dozens of chests. With a brick border on the very top, I'm gonna go about four double chests high on every column for here. This should be more than enough storage for everything. I might not even need to put chests on the other side. I grabbed some oxidized copper bulbs, mainly for the texture, less so for the light, throwing those into both of the side columns, and then it's time to just commit and full send it, breaking the chest, spewing out hundreds of items and starting to categorize my thoughts into each individual one. I made a single chest for copper, a single chest for tough blocks. I broke down all of my stone blocks, pouring out dozens of stacks of materials multiple times over, wood, food, all of the different types of plants, all of the mob drops, all of the sand that I've been collecting for nearly 200 days. I spent spent all of day 162, all of day 163, going between each and every single individual chest, combining it from an overloaded dozen or so to a full wall perfectly categorized and organized. And it's not all labeled yet because I don't have leather because I only have one cow to work with, but it is at least all put away in a place where I think my brain might be able to hold onto it and keep everything just so, and I have a lot of stuff. I honestly don't know how I used that small storage room for nearly as long as I did. Now I need to focus on gathering some new resources. I spent a little bit of time creating some new dirt for myself, grabbing myself a singular grass block, and then thinking that my idea for generating sheep was right idea, wrong place. I already knew I needed to be more careful about biome, but I'm thinking maybe if I stay closer to the platform and limit the amount of spawnable space, then I'll get a sheep. So I flew over towards the acacia tree, being able to get a single piece of cobblestone on the last leaf that was still there and hadn't decayed, bridging over until I found myself in a plains biome. Then I put down all of the grass blocks and dirt that I had, making myself a little eight by eight platform and lighting it up thoroughly, making sure the whole thing was well above light level seven. That'll take some time to fully generate into grass. So I flew back over to the main base, slept, and then went to do a little bit of economics, trading a lot of the iron into the villagers, rotten flesh, and making a cartography table, trying to place that down and have somebody pick up the job, but nobody did. That's a little weird. I flew over towards the grass platform that I was making and built myself up 30 blocks. That way I was outside of the minimum spawn distance, making a small little birch platform here where I'm gonna be doing all of my dirt production from this point forward. This way I'm doing some of the most arduous repetitive tasks over here where theoretically, 
only the grass underneath me should be spawnable. And that should mean that passive mobs would be spawning and maybe, just maybe, I can get myself a sheep. I even turned down my render distance to as few chunks as I possibly could. This now being the only island floating in the entire void that I could see. And it's like we're right back at the beginning in Skyblock if it weren't for the elytra, the shulker boxes and the diamond tools. The platform was mostly green and dirt production worked well throughout the whole night, but we're not getting anything. Okay, this is all grass. We can turn this back up. I'm hopeful. It's gotta work, right? I need sheep, I need wool and cows. If we get two cows, we can have leather. Oh, I need this so badly right now. Not wanting to be slowed down by my lack of livestock, I cleared out the central fountain on the main island as that's gonna get demolished soon, and then headed over towards the two smaller islands directly adjacent to the main villager platform and starting to make those as well. I'm using the same strategy, just mixing up cobblestone and smooth stone with a little bit of cobble deep slate at the very bottom, working up from a central point towards the general outline that I had set up for myself, and this is where a lot of that dirt's gonna come in handy. I made sure to make sure these weren't all on the same level and my whole base just wasn't a flat plane with decorative stuff underneath it so it actually looks like a bunch of different pieces of ground that were ripped out and are floating here in the sky i put down some grass blocks and some torches so they would start to greenify and then headed over to the third little platform surrounding the villagers and started doing the same thing making a roughly bowl shaped island that was now set up pretty nicely and i'm getting pretty good at building these but i am once again <laughs> as I perpetually am, I'm out of dirt. All right, that's all the dirt I can manage for right now. Let's just uh, get rid of this for a bit. That'll take time. <laughs> Seriously, I just need one more cow or two sheep. How do you spawn and how do I get another like you? I know, right? It's frustrating. With the sniffers planted and my friend the cow refusing to divulge their secrets, I headed back over to those islands I had just finished greening, planting some dark oak and birch trees because I'm gonna collect every tree type around here. SBK can just come fight me if they want. Once those were done, I headed over towards the villagers to pick up a new diamond shovel as I had broken mine in all of the dirt production along the way. Trying to go over and do more trades, I did accidentally fall asleep with them. So the following morning, we're back at it. And I thought, let's work on the industrial platform for a little while. We're gonna have the same pattern on all six sides of this thing. So I need to replicate the existing green copper door that is where I'm entering this platform up here on the roof. Then taking the tough bricks and planning that out in an archway around, just setting up the rough dimensions of this thing. And that's gonna take a lot of tough bricks and I don't really have that much. So I went over to the villagers to combine some books, getting fortune one and efficiency three and then being a few levels short on combining them to make my master shovel and at this point I need some of the mob materials and I need to rebuild some version of a mob farm. I first started looking at what it would take to plant a flushing mob farm right at the roof of this thing, but it turns out I would only have enough space for one layer before everything would just kind of break down. So instead of going up, we go low. Instead, planning to build this as basically the bottom half of the entire industrial cube, I started setting out each of the diamond shaped platforms with an observer pointing into the air above a dispenser on each platform. And it turns out it's great at spawning mobs, which isn't great when you're trying to build the thing. So I was constantly fighting every time I needed to step away from materials. And of course, I'm insisting to build this thing out of tough bricks for the visuals, and I love making things things harder on myself. I had to craft up some additional bows to make some additional dispensers, flying back over to the platform, and oh my god. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, I might mayhaps have made a slight error. <laughs> what am I gonna do here? Uh, you off. Well, the good news is it'll spawn stuff. Pretty efficiently, too, from the look of it. Okay. Alright, um, this is potentially a bad idea. Oh, the 
that was scary. <laughs> Oh, that's so fun. After having my fun smashing all of the mobs around here and getting a little bit of the experience that I could use for enchanting if it weren't for the fact that it mended all of my gear, I finally had cleared out a layer that I was able to snipe down into the lower ones to get torches into place and secure this thing from mobs. I then continued working on building out the platforms, thinking I can safely fit about five tiers in this thing. That means it's gonna spawn at a pretty solid rate and I'll always be able to have a good flip of a number of platforms that are active and some that are flushed in any moment. But I did end up running out of tough bricks before being able to finish all of the platforms. So we're gonna have to head out and do some collecting. So in the morning of day 170, I flew out towards my portal over towards the existing trial chamber that I had already cleared. Actually seeing that there was geode here and figured let me pick up the amethyst clusters since I have silk touch and those will be useful for decoration. After that, I just started shaving off a layer off of the top, not even worrying about the interior your mobs for a little while before eventually dropping in and then just doing a little bit of fighting mainly for the XP at this point. If I can get myself up above level 15, I can combine some of my books. So I just fought my way through a few of the spawners, the poison spiders being kind of the most annoying to deal with, but actually finding a few pots and chests that I hadn't looted yet. With my pockets full, I flew back home and immediately got back to work on the mob farm, leaving a small little column of space right next to the central column of all the mechanisms. I finished building the final platform and then started working on the actual timing machine, which by one singular block fit perfectly underneath the main platform. I started setting up a little bit of an etho hopper clock, just trying to get the timing of exactly how long it would take for each platform to flood from water and then having that flip. So some of them would always be spawning. And to keep it interesting, I'm using a copper bulb so that it'll give a very nice clean tick to everything underneath. After that, I had to load up all of the different dispensers with a water bucket or a water bucket above it. And after I checked all of the timings, it's working pretty nicely. But we have to worry about the aesthetics too. So the first thing I needed to put down was the same copper door quote unquote, on the very bottom of the cube, bringing the tough bricks all the way out to the edge to see exactly how much space I had to work with. Mobs were spawning on that, so I proceeded to use wind charges to bap them off into the void, giving myself a quick nap so I didn't have to worry about the darkness. And the following day, after clearing all of the mobs that spawned on the platforms that had not yet been flooded, going back and retorching all of the platforms that were in an on state, heading back down to the very bottom and starting to build out the very base of the overall structure while at the same time being the catching platform for all of the mobs that would be dropping in. I used a lot of copper grates for the surrounding of this because I want the interior to look just as good. And we're over a hundred days in, farms can look aesthetically pleasing as well. But I did mess up the water. Uh, once or twice. So I did have to break it all down and put it all back again to the point where it all then nicely flowed into the five by five space in the very center. I crafted up a stack of soul campfires, these being the faster way to kill all of those mobs, setting those up with hoppers underneath. And now it's not gonna be a perfect cube. There's gonna be a small resource collection platform on the very bottom of the industrial cube. But honestly, this is gonna give me a lot of resources really quickly, get me every everything that I need. So having it down there, I'm fine with that. All right, it's running. I think I can probably make it switch slightly faster. Apologies for the like six day hyper fixation, but I really needed this back. And now that I was done with a multi-day build to get the flushing mob farm in place, the rest of the base kind of needed some love. All of the dripstone had fully grown, so I needed to manicure all of that, setting up a stone brick platform on top of the timer. I actually also continued to mark the center of the entire structure so I could keep everything aligned. This little super smelter or smelting rig is in the wrong place. And I can actually hook it up to the output of the cobblestone farm itself. So I just loaded 
loaded that up off of half of the chests here. So this thing is producing equal amounts of both smooth and cobblestone at all times. All I need to do is keep the lava stocked, but thankfully I have double chests of lava buckets from all of the lava farms being uncollected for some time that I can basically fuel this thing for eternity. Once that was done, I broke down the bone block auto crafter setup that I had made and went down to where the bones are actually going to be, setting that up on the grate underneath the actual mob farm so that could just cook. And then I collected all of the shulker boxes and random chests from around the industrial platform and took that over towards my storage system, getting everything categorized into its place and freeing up a few extra shulker boxes for me to actually use in collecting loot around this world or starting to organize for future builds. It took all of day 174 to do that, but once I put everything back in place, I was able to celebrate a clean home, some combined gear, some better use of all of my levels and a few new friends. My big sniffy friends. I was so focused on the mob farm, I forgot I planted them. Plant, do you plant a sniffer? Mm. I'm excited to get torch flowers. Do we have any sheep over here by chance? Maybe, perchance, perhaps? Nope. Well, dang, okay. But since we're not getting cows, I have another idea on how to get item frames. And it involves the nether and all of the cobble that we just collected. <laughs> Because yeah, cows are the most popular way to get leather, but there's other means. You could barter for it, or you could murder for it. And just to make things fun, we're gonna do more of the latter. I flew over towards the Crimson Island that existed and just put down a ton of cobblestone, making a very basic spawn platform. As soon as I built up to about 24 blocks, yep, hoglin spawning galore. I used my bow to be able to clear out a bunch of them, getting a bunch of XP, a bunch of leather, and a bunch of pork chops, which is good because I'm getting tired of eating potatoes, but I kind of want to kill these things in a different way. Yeah, okay. I was just having fun. Just let me have fun. So I know I could set up a much more automated farm, but just jumping from a high ledge and smashing hoglins with a mace, this is fun. And this is the only world I have a mace in, so just let me have this. This is so good. Once I had collected only about 20 pieces of leather, it's not the most efficient farm, okay? I flew back towards home, giving myself a quick nap and getting into the last quarter of this adventure. Where I flew over towards the industrial platform to grab a bunch of bamboo to turn into sticks to make enough item frames to be able to label most of the chests that I'm currently actively using in the storage wall. It also let me split up a few other things, just getting things in place nicely, placing some dirt on my main island, and then just spending time making dirt in the rain over at the platform, so that way I could use that to complete most of the island close to the villagers. And I I wasn't paying attention to my rockets, landing on my dirt platform with one. One in my inventory, which is a potentially scary flight back. So I did immediately fly over, maintaining as much altitude as I can, and plopped down my rocket shulker box to finally refuel and reload. The following morning, I headed down to the mob farm collection area, grabbing all of the bone blocks and using that to refill and reload the bamboo machine. Taking a quick flight around my kingdom before returning to the work of building the island underneath my main platform. Once I was out of stone and cobblestone, I turned to destruction, breaking down the original platform for the main central hub of the base, breaking down all of the dark oak walls and moving the allays down into the storage room. I'm still not releasing them from the boat, I'm not making that mistake again. And demoing this island might be a controversial one. I understand that the idea would be to always build, always make new things, but this is so core and so central to what I wanna do. And this is a shift from the purely industrial version of the first hundred days into a much more aesthetically pleasing one for the second hundred, being kind of the theme of what I want this video to be. We're going from just surviving to thriving here. The following day, I'm doing planning, really, trying to see how I'm going to convert this square platform into a circle and realizing it's going to be pretty tight towards some of these other islands. I built this place pretty compact, and if I would have been thinking more ahead, I probably would have moved my main island back further. But we will have to do what we have to do as I broke down all of the wood and all of the cobblestone slabs of the very corners of the square of the base, finally getting my first torch flower seed from the sniffers, making a single plot of farmland and 
planting it right next to the dragon egg. And the following morning thought, we've been building for a while, let's think about me for a second. Instead of focusing on my gear, I collected all of the netherite upgrade templates I had and all of the netherite, placing all of the raw diamonds I have here, which I'll need to be able to duplicate this template and figuring out that I only have enough for two right now, as far as the ancient debris front. So I brewed up some fire res potions, filling my pockets with rockets, and let's go through for a quick little combat montage. <laughs> That was an intense little session. I think I walked out of that with about three more, yeah, about three more upgrades worth. So we might need one more montage if we want it to work, but it's been a hot minute and I want to see the sun again. So let's get back to the overworld. It took a little while to make it back to the home portal, actually. I was well over 2,000 blocks away, returning to the overworld in the middle of the day, and then spending the time dropping off the banner pattern, the trim that I had collected, and a few of the other blackstone and nether blocks. I smelted up all of the ancient debris, combining that with gold, making gold blocks from everything else I had collected, and it turns out this trip had taken me from three upgrade templates and two ingots worth to six upgrade templates and three ingots worth, with a few odd scraps in the furnace. Plus, I had all the diamonds I needed now, so a little bit more time and some more ancient debris, and we can fully upgrade. This did remind me that I've been using gold boots, though, so not everything I wear is even diamond, so I don't even need all nine. But I made myself a quick enchanting setup because some of my gear isn't at the perfect enchant just yet. I did just check what the books were, but I got impatient, okay? I was gonna hold off a little while longer, do it on day 200, but instead I just immediately went and trimmed my pants, getting myself the perfect pair of pants and a perfect pickaxe. I then took the third of the upgrades and the final ingot I had upgrading my sword. These are the main pieces of armor that I basically have or use all of the time. So getting them up to netherite feels good. And when I collected the single torch flower in front of my base, putting it inside of the pot right there for decoration, breaking down the cherry trees on the main platform and removing the final few edges and details of this thing, starting to think about what this island is going to be, but remembering that I had a llama pin Yada hovering underneath that I needed to do something about. I finally saved you. I finally saved you. You're finally safe. <laughs> With the llama finally on solid ground, I mined out all of the slabs on the interior of the circle island that I plan to build here. It's gonna be a giant, basically jungle donut, paying homage to where I had started this thing and just keeping everything with a really nice natural look. I made a bit of a platform to allow me to move the llama up to the surface, collecting them on a lead and tying them off to the sniffers, taking a quick little nap. And on day 183, we're building out the donut in earnest. Now it's only five blocks wide, so I don't have a lot of space to make it feel too chunky. So I need to really be careful about what I'm placing so it doesn't just look completely flat and it also doesn't just look like a blob. Building in small scale, especially floating islands, is really, really tricky. You gotta get the details just right. And you know what else you should get right? Remembering to record flashbacks so you can actually montage things. I swear, I'm a professional YouTuber, everybody. Professional Minecrafter. I do this for a living and I forget to record so often. Sierra is constantly teasing me for it. But I was just in the zone, okay? I completed the entire donut in a way that I felt really, really good about in just one day. And then I realized I had no dirt to finish it, so it was basically a giant donut-shaped bowl at the moment. So I flew over towards my dirt creation platform, really, really hoping as I converted and went through the process of making and crafting up more dirt that just one sheep or one cow or two sheep, if I was feeling spicy, would just spawn underneath me and release me from this resource scarcity. But unfortunately, none did. 
The following morning, I completed untethering the donut from everything else around it, breaking down the final remnants of the old platform and figuring out what I'm gonna do as far as the transition point from the central island to my storage system, which was significantly lower. I made a small little pond that I could actually put water into to just bring something else into the overall base, putting whatever sea life and lily pads I had collected from fishing or other materials in place and realizing I could just, at least for right now, stone over the top of this platform and go ahead and use some moss to be able to green all of it without having to create a whole ton of blocks or wait for grass to grow. Now, I am washing away a lot of the top levels, so we're just using moss as a grass replacement right here. Also making a small little waterfall off of one side, so it's not a perfect circle, but I am also throwing some dirt in. I think the combination in textures between the bright green jungle grass and the slightly more muted moss colors is gonna lead to something that looks a lot more natural. Perfect outdoor terrain isn't just all flat one color. And after three days of work, it was done. You know, oh, hello there. Hold on. I was about to talk about something else and nope, we have, we, hi Cookie. Yes, yes, sit. I was not talking to you. Puppy thinks I'm talking to him. Please have an oak sapling. Come here, my friend. Okay, no oak saplings. Acacia, bummer. Let's buy this. And then, uh... Oh no! Wonder what happened, that's so weird. So anyway, like I was saying, I kind of want to not have to deal with this water right here. I feel like that's going to be a bit of a problem. So let's go do something that you can't normally do in Skyblock just because we can. I made some extended release water breathing potions. So I had a full half an hour worth underwater, then checked my markers and realized if I headed almost due east, I would land my way towards something that really doesn't make sense in this world, but that's one of the reasons why I love Skyblock Infinite. said all of this hundred days business was glamorous. I grabbed the gold blocks before mining out the back wall, making doubly sure to put on my elytra before jumping off into the void and flying my way back home. I checked in with all of my new mob friends, set the sponges to dry and use that to very quickly clean up all the water in the central fountain, starting to break that down and spiralize it so I'd be able to maintain this small little platform here to use that to build upward. I sheared off a few of the vines that I had left growing from the main jump point from my little lake onto the island, placing those around the donut so that they would continue to grow around everywhere, making this entire base and all of this build feel a little bit more older and that it had been here for a while. And I had some unexpected things happen while I was away. When did you get there? I go like almost a hundred days with no wandering traders and I get two within five days of each other. Where's your boss? Wait, did they escape somehow? I'm confused. Did they break the lead? This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> this might or might not work. We'll find out. Oh my god, it worked. Space Llama! <laughs> Space Llama! 
Heck yes! With the llama sorted, I went to work on the central area of this donut, which is going to be a raised dais with a big jungle tree on top. I had started this world almost 200 days ago at this point on a small little block of dirt with just a single jungle tree. And now looking at everything that I had built, all of the different resources and materials I had unlocked, it was only right to have that still be one of the main central focuses of the island while still showcasing everything else I had done. I made a few sea lanterns from the materials I had collected from the ocean monument, putting that underneath moss carpet to allow me to light the whole thing with some hidden lighting, throwing some lanterns around as the much more visible version, and flying to the underside of the central island that I had made, smacking my face into it and throwing down a torch as I fell. And this place looks exactly how I had hoped. Oh, that looks so much better. I love it so much. With all the work on the island done, I turned inward, focusing on the back wall of the storage room, using a lot of the dark prismarine that I had collected and the bamboo blocks from the former central fountain to be able to set up the back display wall and art piece so I could put a bunch of trophies here at some point in the future. Once that was done, I headed back outside, replacing the cobblestone slab sections and turning those into actual floating island chunks, similar to the bridge that heads off towards the industrial platform with a copper bulb inside that is mainly just decorative. It's not giving off too much light. I was checking in on those llamas occasionally, wondering when they would no longer be hostile at me, and the day had finally come. They were friendly with me, so let's send them to space. Well, Something about that llama specifically was heavier? <laughs> I don't know. The following morning, it is day 190 and I have an iron axe and that is no longer acceptable. I headed over towards all of the villagers to trade for an efficiency diamond axe, which I then started combining with some silk touch books that I had and a few other things to be able to finally make myself a passable tool. I then broke down the enchanting setup that I just kind of put off on the side in the island and built it much more intentionally, centered into that wall as I don't really need more storage space and finally completely leading the axe all together. With that done, I focused on the entrance to the storage room, using the remainder of the bamboo blocks that I collected and a few more that I had crafted up to set up a little bit of a bamboo archway to continue the jungle theme before transitioning into the more earth tone centered storage room that is mainly just brick, dark prismarine and jungle wood. Getting this arch right did take a little bit of work and I set up a few bamboo shelves in front of each so that I could put down a few random working blocks, some armor stands and some other decorations. And it feels really good to fly into here now. It's just big enough that I can do it safely and land right on my bed. The following morning, it's time to add that geode I mentioned a while back, putting down the smooth basalt and then setting up all of the different layers of this thing. I don't have a ton of space to work with, so it is tricky and I don't really build this semi-organic structure too often. It's something that is a little bit out of my comfort zone, but that's part of the reason why I love doing these 100 days is that I always get to try something new. But as I was flying away to admire it, I saw something walking around in my base that did not belong. Wait a minute. What are you doing in there, little buddy? Where did you, where did you two come from? What here is special? Spawnable. There shouldn't be anywhere here that can spawn mobs. I worked on throwing down some extra torches, having some additional mob just come out of the woodwork. Thinking that maybe it's on top of the walls, I threw down a whole bunch other torches and I spammed the heck out of that place. Landing up on the surface to check in on the sniffers to see if they had produced any more plants before flying back over towards the industrial platform to just condense down all the bones into bone blocks and all of the string into wool. I might not have sheep, but I do have some ways to make the wool that I will need, just not nearly fast enough. The next morning, I put down a ton of coarse dirt, hoeing it in place to be able to put grass on each side and allow that to start growing. I really want to try to properly seal the island before we run out of time here, and it's getting close. I head over to the industrial platform, pushing an enderman to go say hi to a leather worker, working on some of the copper banding on the side of this thing. Continuing the pattern of the three by three squares, even though I was out of tough at the moment and very quickly into this ran out of tough bricks, I did 
have a little bit of a panic as the existing cobblestone wall that I had here, the path, didn't account for the fact that I had moved the wall one block over to have the copper on the outside of the ring. So the interior and the exterior weren't lining up and the math wasn't mathing. I took a quick little nap, went over towards the villagers and did some capitalism to clear my head, grabbing a bit more of the copper that I had and just double checking everything. I was not quite ready to potentially accept the fact that I had built my industrial platform wrong. So instead, in the searching for all of my materials, I found a few amethyst clusters just sitting in one of my chests and put those over into the geode so I had something pretty to distract myself and look at. I then flew over towards the geo that would actually grow the clusters and maybe it's because I was on some of the further platforms but there hadn't been a lot that had grown here. So I flew over to the next geode over which generates with a few fully formed buds which I can put into place. And standing from the top of my tree in the central of my kingdom I was just looking around at all of the different islands that I built trying to think of a finale something that I could do to end this adventure on a high note. And I came up with an idea and it's not a good idea, but it really could be fun. On over here. Oh my god, this is genuinely so scary. Okay, now all I have to do. I can go away. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> what am I thinking? What am I, what am I thinking? This is not smart. This is not smart. <laughs> Perfect, you're right there. Is this high enough? I don't know if this is high enough. I'm gonna have to Google if this is high enough. I'll do that later. I'm gonna... I'll get them on day 100, okay? Okay, cool. Now you know. <laughs> now you know what the finale is. I made my way back towards home and then I thought, you know, if we're planning something super dangerous for the finale, there are some moderately dangerous things that I just haven't gone and cleared and dealt with. So I flew over towards the Pillager Mansion that I checked out all the way back in the first video. And I remembered that I never cleared the upper layers of this thing. There's still just evokers and vex and pillagers roaming around in the upper floors that I could run in, kill, grab a few emeralds and totems for, and deal with way too many vex swarming around me. I finally cleared and fully liberated this structure, grabbing three totems for my effort, which is a good safety net for my finale plans, and remembering that I can finally pick up all of the flowers from here, going and planting those all around the base to bring a bunch of different 
different colors and some different vibes throughout the whole thing. It's even more that I've collected and acquired and now it's finally home. I did a quick little pass at the Dripstone Farm, gave myself a quick little nap as murder is exhausting, and then flew over towards a trial chamber to get myself a whole bunch more waxed copper. So even though I can't complete the whole cube in time, I can at least complete the central trim of the main floor and make sure I had done my math right and this thing was centered. Who knows, if this video does really, really well, maybe, just maybe, completing this industrial platform will be an adventure that we do in 300 days. It'd be really interesting to take a world that long. I have not done that in a long time. And even my main hardcore world has kind of fallen off with UHCG being my main just vanilla survival experience. But I kept clearing through this vault, it being a new one. So I'm getting a lot of cool things like weakness potions from the dispensers, being able to get some raw diamonds and other loot and goodies from all of the vaults. I mined out a ton of copper through the night, jumping out of the wall on day 196 and flying back over towards the ancient city. Having done a little bit of Googling between the previous recording and this one, which was my last day recording, and realizing that the platform I had built was not nearly tall enough. I flew back over towards the portal, having to clear out some angry cubes before returning my way back home, dropping off and banking all of the materials that I had collected from the trial chambers before taking all of the copper over, turning all the bulbs on, and realizing that everything was fine. The old cobblestone center was just the old center before it was shifted by one block from the outer edge. It's the center of the interior, but it doesn't account for the fact that all of this trim is technically on the outside. The so same. I was able to sleep easy going into day 197, as I was mainly focused on finishing this storage room. I don't want to see all of the diorite slabs and everything else that was just meant to be infrastructure underneath the dirt above, so I need to build a roof on this platform. I've set up some very basic walls on the top of the chest wall. I started working on closing in and connecting the bookcase of the enchanting area into the walls on each side, running out of tough, so having to come up with a slightly different design. I'm using stone brick for the roof to clear everything up, and I have another issue where this room isn't exactly symmetrical, so it's not gonna come to a single point. We'll deal with that later. I quickly went and made myself a better helmet, as I had disenchanted my helmet previously, and was hoping for protection for, but we're just gonna get diamond on at the very minimum, taking some of the copper bulbs that I had, and finally replacing some of the torch spam on a few of my floating islands. I then flew by my industrial platform, realized that I had built a few of the corners wrong, so I had to wax a bit of copper using some honeycomb from the trial chambers themselves, replacing all of the lights and copper blocks on the two corners that were incorrect. With that done, I returned back to the storage room, stripping some jungle logs to surround the entrance of the storage room, and then making a whole bunch of bamboo so I can make a whole bunch of barrels and slabs and build everything up with some different decorative textures surrounding the enchanting space. Once that was finished, I closed off the walls with brick. I continued all of the stone brick for the roof and worked my way towards a central point, which didn't actually end up being a singular block and didn't fully perfectly line up with the wall water stream that I had, but that's mainly because this room isn't symmetrical, so I had to be a little bit creative, making a slightly oblong version of the roof with the water dripping down from the center. With all of that done, I took the one random chest with all of my netherite templates, placed that on the wall so it was somewhere a little bit more correct, made a few armor stands to represent the different stages of my progress so far, crafted myself up a whole bunch of rockets, and flew through the portal to go smash a warden. But I don't get to do it just yet. I had to head over and demolish the platform, building my way up. And I figured if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. Heading all the way up, not only to where I know I'll be able to do lethal damage, but all the way up to the build limit building a small little cobblestone platform up here, just one block below where we can't build any further. And I actually forgot to bring wood. So I had to fly all the way back down to the very bottom of the world, grabbing just enough dark oak planks and a few pieces of wool from the ancient city itself, flying up, which took several rockets and having a quick nap because we're not doing this finale in the dark, but that's enough yapping for me. Back to Lagundo in the past to show you how we're ending this. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. 
Okay, that didn't go how I planned. Take two? Take two. We can definitely do it. We can definitely do a second try. Come here, you. Not good. <laughs> oh boy. That would have been smart. Bring the totem. I definitely forgot the totems. Yes! First try! First try! <laughs> Oh my god! First try. <laughs> we can go home now, I've done it. Flying through the portal and back towards home, I named the catalyst first try because we did that first try and there's no evidence otherwise. And with a triumphant crash of my mace on a warden's skull, killing the thing that is meant to be unkillable, I dropped my armor off and ended this chapter of this adventure.